for our live web chat about the new Fulbright NATO Security Studies Award. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. So before we get to the participants' questions, as an American Fulbright alumna, could you give us a brief description of the Fulbright NATO Award? The Fulbright NATO Award is a new award for the 2014-2015 academic year in which we would like to bring over an American scholar specializing in international security to the College of Europe, which is located in Bruges, Belgium. And this would be for a five-month period, so from January until May. And they would teach a course, a master's level course, to a group of international students, highly international students. I'll tell you more about our student body later on as well as become integrated into the College of Europe life. They'll also have ample, ample opportunity to conduct their own research as well. Wonderful. Okay, so we've been seeing some questions. Um, and so one of the questions is, what was your Fulbright application process like? My Fulbright application began when I was in the United States, and it was similar to this structure in that the deadline was in early August, and the application first went to the United States Selection Committee and then to the Fulbright Belgium Committee before I finally found out, um, just a few months before my Fulbright was going to start. Wonderful. And um, where can someone apply for the Fulbright NATO Award? They can find more information on the Fulbright Belgium website. So if they go to fulbright.be, then they can search for it there. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Um, so continue on to the questions that we've been seeing. How has winning a Fulbright Award impacted your career? Oh, well, winning the Fulbright really changed everything for me because I won a Fulbright to do research here in Belgium, in Brussels, in 2005, 2006, and it was during that period that I found my current position at the College of Europe. And so it was really thanks to Fulbright that I had this opportunity to be in Europe and be at the right place at the right time and get to know institutions like the college. Wonderful. And um, what are... Uh, or what, what has been your experience uh, working at the College of Europe been like? Uh, well, the College of Europe is a very interesting institution. It is specialized wholly on the European Union. And so if you like the European Union, I always say it's all EU all the time. Everything is revolving around European Union studies. We have four programs in Bruges, in law, economics, politics, and external relations. And we have a very motivated and interesting student body. They come from 40 plus countries, um, primarily European, but also elsewhere. And they've come here highly motivated because they want to know more about the European Union. This is why they chose the College of Europe. And so it's a very international environment, and the students are a lot of fun. They're very interesting. A lot of them are already studying for their second master's, mm -hmm. in fact. So they're mm -hmm. highly knowledgeable at the beginning, and on average, they speak two or three foreign languages. Wow. So um, could you tell us what it's like living and working in Bruges, Belgium? Well, I actually live here in Brussels, and quite a few people that work in the college do commute in from Brussels or from outside of Bruges. And so I can't tell you what it's like living in Bruges, but working in Bruges is a very pleasant place. It's very nice. It's um, a very touristic town. It's been in several movies because it's really, really beautiful. Okay. And what is sort of the typical uh, College of Europe student? The typical College of Europe student student, I would say, I'll, I'll speak more from my own experience in the politics department. I know those students better. But they tend to be around 25, 26 years old, and most of them already have an advanced degree of some sort. As I'd mentioned, they are frequently already studying for their second master's degree. And as I also mentioned, they speak multiple foreign languages, and they are very interested in the European Union. Wonderful. Um, so what is the linguistic situation at the College of Europe, and should applicants be able to speak uh, a language besides English, as you've already mentioned, that they're multi-sort of linguistic there? Mm -hmm. Well, the College of Europe is in an interesting situation because technically it is located in Flanders, where Flemish or Dutch would be the language, the local language there, but the college is actually bilingual French and English. Mm -hmm. 
And so a Fulbright scholar, if they came to the college, it would be advantageous if they were able to go and speak French because this would allow them to fully participate in all of the activities. But that said, English is one of our working languages. And so it is possible for someone that did not speak French, that only spoke English, to be able to come to the college and become a part of the college community. Okay, thank you. So um, now just reaching out to the, sort of the research and teaching for professors, the professor side of this. So what is the balance between that research and teaching for professors at the College of Europe? Well, one of the interesting, another one of the interesting things about the college is we have something called the flying faculty. And what that means is that the college primarily uses visiting professors that are coming from other institutions. So each of the departments has a full-time professor. So I would be that professor in the politics department, but the other professors are based at other institutions. And so their own re te uh, teaching and research balance would be determined by their home institution. But for myself, being permanently at the college, I have my teaching. The teaching load is relatively light because it specializes so strongly in European Union affairs. So it's not like in uh, another university where I would be teaching five or six different courses that are more general and maybe one or two would have to do with my own area of expertise. I only teach in my area of expertise at the college. And so that part is nice. It does free up some time for research, but on the other hand, there's also a heavy administrative load as well. Okay, thank you. So we do have a question. It's coming through Fulbright Be Belgium. Um, so why is the College of Europe interested in working with a Fulbright scholar, specifically in transatlantic security studies? Well, a couple of reasons. First of all, there's an interest in the college in improving transatlantic relationships and developing our own relationships with American universities and American academics. And secondly, the subject matter is of vital importance and of strong interest, not only to the college as an institution, but also to our students. We've offered courses on transatlantic security and international security before that are always very well subscribed by the students. So we'd love to have an opportunity for an American scholar to come over. And so as um, if someone were to be a mid-career professional, mm -hmm. um, how would they go about getting time off from their job in the States to do this type of award program? What most people would do is they would go to their dean or the person in charge and say that they have the opportunity to do a Fulbright fellowship. Fulbright, as I said, is quite well known and so depending on what field that person is in, if the person is in academia, then they would definitely already know what a Fulbright Fellowship is. Mm -hmm. And most people are then given some sort of leave time off mm -hmm. in order to go and do the Fulbright. It's not for a full year, it's only for five months as well. And so that's doable for a lot of institutions. Okay. Um, so if you've taught in Europe before or lived abroad for a significant amount of time, does that help or hurt your application? I think that it could help if you're able to go and demonstrate your own motivation and curiosity about ex building on that prior experience. And so we're not privileging people that have never left the United States, for example, and people that have studied abroad already or worked abroad have demonstrated their ability to work in a multinational environment. And so that would generally be viewed positively. But if they were quasi-European and in Europe all the time anyway, then that might not be viewed as positively. I see. So are there, are there, any, I mean, are there any indicators or, or something on an application that you think would, would, give someone an opportun I mean, would give someone more opportunity or less opportunity or never having come to Europe, would that be an, a handicap or? It wouldn't necessarily be a handicap. Mm. You know, as I said, the most important things for us is that they have a demonstrated interest in and experience in international security affairs mm -hmm. and also have a PhD. And so beyond that, we are relatively open because the application process, as I said, is reviewed by many people. Mm -hmm. And so there are a lot of different facets that they're interested in. And so it's not a singular experience mm -hmm. or lack of experience that is going to push the application forward or hinder okay. it. Okay. Um, what type of experience, in, sort of in, in your opinion, would help an applicant to get 
this NATO Security Studies Award grant? Mm -hmm. Well, what we're really looking for is someone with a demonstrated interest and expertise in transatlantic security affairs. And so conceivably, this could be an academic, and the applicants are typically academics, but they don't have to be. They could also have practical experience. But that said, because they are expected to be teaching a master's level course, we would require them to have a doctorate. Okay. Um, are there any other specific quali qualifications that you see that an applicant needs for this particular award? I think the other thing that would be really useful for an applicant is that they would have a motivation in working with the students at the college and becoming integrated into the college life. Okay. And what are the difficulties that you saw in applying for for an award or a grant like this and, and some of the things that you, you would like to share with others that are in that process? I think the biggest difficulty for me is that it's a very long process mm -hmm. that involves a lot of different people. So you'll go through long spells where you just won't hear anything mm -hmm. and you'll wonder if everything is all right and then a few months will go by and you'll get a letter saying that you've made it on to the next stage. But during that interim period, as I mentioned in the beginning, I didn't find out about my own award until May mm -hmm. and I was expected to leave in sept early September. I understand. I see that. And w was there anything that you would do differently or anything that you would, any tips or any anything that you would recommend um, applicants doing beforehand or? In a vast, well, I think that first of all, making sure that they do fulfill the basic requirements mm -hmm. would be important in particular the doctoral degree and mm -hmm. also think not only about the research aspect but also the teaching aspect. What kind mm -hmm. of course would you like to teach? What sort of topics would you want to go and bring up in the classroom with the students that could enrich the college environment? Okay, thank you. So we do have another question coming in from somewhere in Belgium. So um, can an applicant incorporate another field in their research or teaching, for instance, studying transatlantic security through the perspective of economics or other fields? Mm -hmm. It is possible. That's mm -hmm. not something that's excluded. But um, the but the typical applicant would probably be focusing on transatlantic security studies. Okay, so there's nothing that they can do parallel to that, mm -hmm. or you don't you don't see any sort of. Uh, well, this is something mm -hmm. that they would really mm -hmm. be doing more on their own research time because the because the course and the requirements that are also set by NATO deal with transatlantic security and not just transatlantic relationships more broadly. We do have another Fulbright Fellowship mm -hmm. that is the Fulbright Schumann Fellowship mm -hmm. it was called and this would deal with transatlantic relationships more broadly. Okay so now we have a more cultural based question. Um, how is it, or what are your experiences living in Belgium as an American, and what do you find striking about Belgian culture? Okay, well my own experience as an American living in Belgium has been overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly positive. It is a very international environment. I live here in Brussels, I don't actually live in Bruges, mm -hmm. but the College of Europe itself is also very international and multicultural and this has been very stimulating for me from a personal perspective as well as a professional one. And so I really enjoyed that. Would there be opportunities while at the College of Europe for a recipient of the NATO Award to work alongside recipients of the Schumann Award, as you just mentioned? Oh, uh, they actually aren't running in the same year, so oh, okay. unfortunately that isn't a possibility because the Schumann Award happens every other year. And so we will have a fellow this academic year and the NATO fellow would be the year afterwards. And then the year after that we would have another Schumann fellow. Okay, so this is a question through Fulbright Belgium. Can scholars work directly with EU institutions and NATO while in Belgium? And how does the proximity of these organizations affect scholarly activities? It is really an advantage because Bruges is only an hour away from Brussels and so it's very easy for the scholar to conduct research at NATO headquarters, for example, or with any of the European institutions. Okay. All right, so I'm just looking. Um, okay, so in, in the meantime, your best or sort of your successes at the College of Europe, what can you say that you've seen or things that um, programs that have evolved while you were there, 
and also things that you liked or in programs you'd like to see uh, instated in, at the College of Europe? Mm -hmm. Well, the College of Europe, as I said, it has four departments and I'm involved in politics and administration. And so we've seen a lot of exciting developments in recent years. For example, we have a program with the Lisbon Council, a think tank in Brussels, and Accenture, the management consulting company, where we have the students work in teams with consultants from Accenture on cases of public sector reform. Mm -hmm. And so I think this is really the direction that I'd like to see the college go in, where they not only have academic experience and knowledge, but also this practical experience, which mm -hmm. is really important in today's marketplace. Um, well, this is um, from Fulbright Belgium. It's also directed through um, some of the questions that have been coming in. Is there a large American contingency at the master's level at the College of Europe? There isn't a large contingency. Mm -hmm. We normally have maybe two Americans at the, at the college. And so they might be in politics, they might be in international relations mm -hmm. or in law. Okay. And uh, the, sort of a, another question coming in as well. Do master's students um, complete a thesis as a part of their curriculum? And could the award, award grantee work with students on thesis? Yes, they do. Mm -hmm. In the different departments, the students are required to write, to write a thesis, and we would love it if the NATO winner were willing and interested in working with our students on their master's thesis. Mm, wonderful. So, um, so would there be opportunities yes. while at the college? Well, okay, there would be, and there w yes. would there be opportunities for the recipient of the NATO award to work alongside the re recipients of other awards, like, Sh like the Schumann Award? Do mm -hmm. is there like a sort of there are, mm -hmm. yes, there are mm -hmm. the chairholders okay. that are at the college, mm -hmm. not the Schumann Award because, as I mentioned, that's in an alternate year, mm -hmm. and so they wouldn't be able to work with that. But mm -hmm. we have, for example, an EU China chair, mm -hmm. and we also have the Alcoa Foundation. Chair chair, which is a person that deals in EU energy policy. Mm -hmm. So there are opportunities to look for some interesting synergies. Wonderful. Okay, so let's go to the next question. Um, okay, well, here we go. So as an American looking at scholarship opportunities in the world, um, why would someone recommend Fulbright and more specifically why Belgium? Well, why Fulbright? I'd say, mm -hmm. first of all, that Fulbright has a very long history mm -hmm. of sending people abroad, not only to Europe and to Belgium, but to other places. And so Fulbright has the administrative structure in place. They know how to bring people over. That makes your life easier. And they also have their built-in support system that way, too. When I first arrived in Belgium, for example, I was partnered up with another Fulbrighter who was mm -hmm. Belgian mm -hmm. and had studied in the United States and was living in Brussels again. Mm -hmm. And that's nice that you have this connection. And also, the Fulbright name is relatively well-known. And so this also helps open some doors. So in, in your experience, uh, did you have the opportunity to reach out to other Fulbright alumni in Europe? Mm -hmm. I did. There are also various institutionalized ways that happens through Fulbright. Mm -hmm. Fulbright Belgium, for example, had organized several events with the former Fulbrighters from Belgium as well as Luxembourg. And so, for example, we had an American Thanksgiving with the Fulbright alumni here in Belgium. And in the spring, there is a program where people from Americans from across Europe are able to come together to Belgium to go and look at the European Union, look at NATO and transatlantic institutions. So there are several ways that this happens. Okay. And this leads to the next question that I see here. So what kind of resources are available to Fulbright scholars after their award? The resources, in, are, are you, do you mean monetary or institutional, or I'm not quite uh, sure what you I'm mean by resources? I'm thinking maybe institutional. I'm, I, this is what I think they're, they're asking, because probably not monetary, because after mm -hmm. the award. Yeah, after the, the award, award is terminated, it's over, yes, and I uh, think yeah. that mm -hmm. there is, I do know people that have successfully applied for more than one Fulbright award. Mm -hmm. So this is also another possibility, but it should be spaced out. It's not something that would happen sequentially. Mm -hmm. But afterwards, there is a Fulbright alumni program, mm -hmm. and so there are still opportunities for alumni to be continually, continually involved in Fulbright. And there's also an active Fulbright community on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And so Fulbrighters helping Fulbrighters, it's a little bit like what might one might think of with 
when you finish your university and people helping other graduates of the university, there's still that same networking effect. Okay, and how are you connected? Um, are you very active with the Fulbright alumni community? I do know some Fulbright, uh, Fulbright alumni, and I also still work with the Fulbright office in Belgium um, fairly regularly. Okay, and this leads me to the other question that just has come in. In your own experience, did you have the opportunity to reach out to other Fulbright alumni in Europe? So. I have, and mm -hmm. I did it both when it was during my Fulbright year as well as afterwards. And so I still get invited to a lot of the Fulbright receptions that come. So when the Americans mm -hmm. have come in to Belgium for their own Fulbright years, I, their own Fulbright year, I've had the chance to go and meet with them at that time. And I'm also frequently part of the program that they have when they bring the Fulbrighters from across Europe to Belgium. And I give a one hour lecture on European economic and monetary integration. All right, so um, getting back to something that you mentioned, um, that you, so I have a question here um, that's um, channeled through Fulbright Belgium. So you've talked about American Thanksgiving in Belgium. What mm -hmm. other kind of cultural exchanges have you experienced as a Fulbright Scholar and at the College of Europe? Oh, well, one thing that is a lot of fun at the College of Europe is they have something that's called National Week. Mm -hmm. And with National Week, what students do is frequently they'll get together with other nationalities, and that week will be a celebration of their culture and their heritage. So for example, they might have some food brought in from their region or from their part of the world to the canteen where everybody can go and sample something like that. You might have a film night that's sponsored mm -hmm. where you see movies. And we've also seen politicians being brought in to go and talk to the students. Okay, um, so another question coming in. What advice would you give to an applicant for this NATO award and what would be your number one piece of advice? My number one piece of advice would be to think very carefully about what your own objectives would be for a year at the college. Because the idea behind the award is for the applicant to not only have the chance to go and do their own research, which is also part of the award, of course, but also for that person to become involved in the college life and really experience the college and working with the students. And so if they are hoping for an award that allows them to spend a lot of time writing mm -hmm. and doing their own research, this award, in theory, would allow you to do that to a certain extent, but that's not really the idea behind it. Okay. So, so how should sort of the, the award, win award winner bring their experience, um, um, if they were American back to, I mean, being American back to the U.S.? Mm -hmm. How do they transfer that experience? Well, there are a couple of different ways. The first way would be in the classroom, of course, mm -hmm. where they would have had the experience of working with the European students, mm -hmm. uh, with the international students at the college. And as I'd mentioned, they are very knowledgeable from the very first mm -hmm. day. And so they're a very interesting group to be teaching. Mm -hmm. And secondly, being in Belgium, it is very easy to make connections at the institutions, including NATO. Mm -hmm. And so this could be very fulfilling for research research purposes, that there would be ample opportunities for the person to visit the NATO headquarters if that's what they wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Oh, another question coming in that actually kind of leads to this. Does the College of Europe currently have any partnerships with American universities uh, for student exchange or faculty exchange? Mm -hmm. Not yet. Oh, okay. But if you have a proposal, <laughs> we would love to hear about it. That's wonderful. So there isn't sort of, a, uh, sort of an American Erasmus equivalent then? Not at the moment, mm -hmm. no. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, but we would be interested in having stronger transatlantic relations, as I said. One of the challenges that we have, as I mentioned, we don't have a lot of American students, and mm -hmm. part of the reason for that, I think, is because of the French requirement. Okay. Um, but do you, do you feel that there could be anything, apart from the language barrier, w are there programs that, that could be created that would attract more American students, in your I think, opinion? Yes, I do think that that's a possibility. Mm -hmm. 
And so what kind of programs would attract more American students here to, to Belgium, Well, for one program that is relatively new at the college is the program called International Relations and Diplomacy, mm -hmm. and that attracts the most applications from Americans, in mm -hmm. fact, which makes sense because it is dealing with EU external relations. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so another question that has just come in, could an award grantee continue the relationship with the College of Europe after the award, and mm -hmm. if so, how? Oh, I think that would be a wonderful opportunity, mm -hmm. and this has happened with previous award winners, not mm -hmm. for the NATO Fellowship, because this is new, but for the Fulbright-Schumann Fellowship, Alan Hendrickson, for example, mm -hmm. was a Fulbright-Schumann Fellow a few years ago, and the college has maintained this relationship with him, and he has also continued to come to some college events, and yes, we would love to have the opportunity to continue to interact with the Fulbright Fellow afterwards. Wonderful. So another more specific question is, how would you form a research topic as part of your application, and how detailed should the research topic be at the time of that application? Mm -hmm. Well, for a lot of applicants, this would be an ongoing research project, not necessarily something that they thought of specifically for the Fulbright, but if you were in that position, it doesn't have to be extensively developed. It's only a few pages long. It's about, um, what they're asking for is a three to five page mm -hmm. project statement and a bibliography of up to three pages. And so this is something that is doable for most people. Okay. Um, and again, okay, we're now going to a more logistic question. Yes. If you've never left the U.S., um, I, I think a lot of applicants might wonder about visa requirements. So is that something that would be handled by Fulbright? Fulbright handles the okay. visas. That's great. So that's good to know. <laughs> um, anything else that you would like to share um, with us regarding sort of this, this NATO award program? Just that I would encourage everyone that's interested to apply. The deadline is coming up relatively soon. It's going to be on August 1st. And for more information, please see the Fulbright.be website. Great. Well, thank you, Dr. Chang, for being with us here today and for all of these um, for f great um, answers and the information that you've given all of the potential applicants for this award. Thank you very much. Thank you.